Hi students, welcome to the Chem 300 series and Year 11 Chemistry. Properties and Structures of Matter is our first module and this is video number 10, our introduction to electron configuration. Now I'm going to apologize straight up front because we're going to start to get into a few more complex concepts here um, and some of these I'm sure will be very new for you. Rest assured that if you've got questions, we'll take those in class. You can add them if you've got them here and I'll, uh, and I'll respond. But um, it's very important that you work through a lot of activities in class, lots, lots of examples. It's a little repetitive, but it's a way of making sure that you get a clear understanding of what's going on. Up till now, our understanding of atomic structure has been that electrons occupy what we've called discrete energy levels. They're stable in those levels. They absorb energy to move from the ground to an excited state, and they release that same little packet of energy to move back down. And all that's nice, and it works very well for the um, atomic model that we've used based on Bohr's um, findings. Uh, and it works very, very well, too, for calculating things like uh, ions. But there's a slightly bigger story and we need to have a quick look at that uh, in this video. So not only do we have a maximum number of electrons in each uh, shell or each energy level, but then something else is happening within there too. At this point in time, we've looked at the fact that the first energy level, and if we look at the periodic table, and I have one in a, in a later slide, um, that as we, as we increase uh, a period, we move to a new shell. So simply put, that means for period one, only hydrogen and uh, helium are in that period. So there's only two electrons that occupy that first shell. In period two, we have uh, eight electrons, uh, eight uh, different uh, elements in that period going from lithium through to neon and eight electrons. Now what we've looked at is in the third one we have another eight that we can fill as we go through from um, sodium to argon and then when we start the fourth um, shell, uh, fourth period, then we start a fourth shell. Unfortunately this picture is not as simple as this. Because we've probably, or you've probably experienced up until now, that your teachers have only taught you the, the electron configurations of the first 20 elements. So if we start a new shell here, we get to calcium, which has an electron configuration of 2882. Works perfectly. Everything is logical up to that point. You start a new row. You start a new uh, shell. It's all good. Unfortunately, whilst this is the maximum number of electrons for period one uh, or shell number one, and this is the maximum number of electrons for shell two period number two, uh, it's not for three. In fact, this can go up to 18. And we have a formula. The formula is 2n squared, which tells us the actual maximum number of electrons that any one um, shell can uh, have. So if it's the first one, it's 2 times 1 squared, which is 2. Then it's 2 times 2 squared, which is 4. 2 fours are 8. Then, of course, in the third shell, it's 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, and 2 9s are 18. So you can see how we can use this formula to calculate the maximum number. So what's actually going on? What's actually going on are what we might refer to as subshells or suborbitals. Now these can get quite tricky and I will go into them in a little bit more detail later on. But this, the great thing about these is that the periodic table is set up in such a way that you can easily identify where each of these is. So first of all, the first two groups are the S group. So that's the first subshell, S. The second is the P group, and so they're all the ones, so these are all on the extreme left, and the P's are the little group that are bundled over on the right and go right up to the noble gases. The D are the transition metals, so they're in the center of the table, and then the ones that are sort of hanging down the bottom are the F group, uh, which are the uh, lanthanides and actinides. So when you look at the periodic table, this is what you can see. These two groups here are our S. These ones over here are our P. In the middle 
is our D, and then these two down the bottom are our F. Look, we're close to time and you need to have a practice of these in class, but let's just work through one. We know that fluorine in our uh, previous um, look at electron configurations would be 2 and 7. So what we're going to do now is we're going to identify the fact that it has two electrons in its 1s, uh, two in its 2s, and five in its 2p. This may not make sense yet, but have a look at the others, see if you can have a go, and we'll have a practice in class. Thanks for watching.